Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, Alternatives to Bankruptcy, part five in our series on the myths and material facts of bankruptcy with a bankruptcy attorney, Mallory Powers. Welcome to the last segment, Mallory. Thank you. Uh, there are alternatives to bankruptcy. There are. Okay, and so do you sometimes suggest to your client, I don't think you should file seven, 13, or if you're a business, 11, I don't think you should be doing any of this. Yeah, I do. There are times where bankruptcy probably just isn't worth it. And there are other things that they can do to manage mm-hmm. their debt, but they might not even be aware of them. Oh, well, let's go down. I wanted to go right down that road. Okay, you, I came to you and you said, were you aware? Are, are most of your clients not aware that they have these alternatives? Yeah, a lot of the times they just don't know what to do. They're lost. There's not the information out there to tell them how to handle it. Could you give me an example of an alternative that you suggested to a person because it was really in their best interest to go this route? Well, taxes, for one, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, the IRS Mm -hmm. negotiates debt. Um, Medical bills, actually, they're one of the biggest creditors who negotiate debt. So if you've got really high medical bills, but you can only pay X amount, and that's your only debt that you're looking for, um, that might be a good one to negotiate Mm -hmm. down. Uh, There's there's debt settlement programs that you might be able to... to, um, work out instead mm-hmm. of filing bankruptcy. There's a lot of things that, mm-hmm. that people aren't aware about. Now, in, in your practice, do you think uh, it's a, still a small amount that go to alternatives to bankruptcy? They, they, they don't do 7, they don't do 11, they don't do Chapter 13. But is it a big a number of, of consumers or no? It's pretty small that actually look at the alternatives once they're in trouble. I think it's pretty small. Uh, sometimes there's people who, who do know the information and will go and do that, and then bankruptcy is their last resort because mm-hmm. they really don't want to file bankruptcy. But otherwise, if people haven't done that yet and I suggest it, that, that's probably a small amount. Now, I've noticed, uh, we've talked about, I've seen some serious taxes get forgiven, right, mm-hmm. by, the, by the IRS. Okay, they really chewed it down. The last one I saw was the $72,000. They told him to pay eight grand and he'd be done. Mm-hmm. And he wrote a check, yeah. right? I mean, so, so that's great. <laughs> Medical, is that different or easier? You know, I have a 70, I'm thinking of this one client, 79,000, Obamacare. By the time they figured out his deductions and everything else, he bought a cheap bronze plan, right? Mm -hmm. And he had a major problem. Now he's got 79 grand. He doesn't have the money for it. Mm -hmm. He went to negotiate that. He's still in negotiation. How how have you found that? It depends on the the creditor, whether Mm -hmm. it's a hospital or a particular doctor or something, but it just depends on how they handle it. The bigger companies, Mm -hmm. a hospital or um, insurance company maybe, they might negotiate easier, um, and they just want a little bit of money because they know that they're not going to get paid Mm -hmm. on a lot of it. People Mm -hmm. don't pay medical bills as as much as they would like to. Mm -hmm. So those, I think, are a little bit easier to negotiate. Now, when you talk negotiation, I'm just and I'm just asking for a rule of thumb. I know if I have a seventy nine thousand dollar and it's to a hospital, a big one in town, am I looking at half of it, quarter of it down, or I what? would say a quarter, you know, off the top, uh, or down to a quarter, down to a quarter. So I, I could would get seventy five percent reduction in my medical right. if I just sat down and talked. Do you a get involved and say I'm going to send Mallory over to talk to these guys? I don't usually. Uh-huh. Um, I usually because they don't really want to talk to me. Sometimes mm-hmm. people are just scared about talking to lawyers. So mm-hmm. a, a medical company are going to mm-hmm. are they'll negotiate easier with the actual patient versus mm-hmm. me. So I don't get that involved there. I have noticed a big mistake and you cited it here. I'm so glad you did. Uh, I have it's it's bad enough that you have to think about bankruptcy, okay? It is. That you're in trouble financially. But I have people that are so strung out on not filing so they go to their retirement account. They pull the money out. Now, of course, mm-hmm. most of all ERISA products are all going to get taxed. There's no basis in this. So all of their retirement is getting taxed. That also, retirement causes their Social Security to get taxed. Mm-hmm. Now I have this double taxation, and you would have said to the person, if you would have filed all of that, most of it, most of the time, would have been protected. Right. Yeah, that's the worst case scenario for me when someone comes in and says, well, I just withdrew all my retirement, now it's gone, and so now I need to file bankruptcy. I wish they would have came to me a year ago, and I would have said, save all that because it's protected in bankruptcy. Just file your bankruptcy. Get rid Mm -hmm. of the stuff you can't pay. Save your retirement for when you really need it, when you retire. So it's really unfortunate when people 
take out their retirement to pay debt. Well, when this video shows up on whatever Friday it's scheduled, uh, and and Mallory's going to do some of the writing on that. That's a big issue to make sure our public knows that. Yeah, I would. It, it bothers me that we're seeing people pull their money out, paying full ordinary income taxes, having their social security benefits taxed because of that withdrawal, and then they could have, they would have filed, and they're going to file, and they could have done this and protected all of it. Right. Well, yeah, that's 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 really important information and hurtful that you have to go through that. I, right. That really bothers me. Okay, now, and and when you have, I'm, I'm and I don't want to get too deep into this. I'd like to save it for another time. But now it's business bankruptcy. Just I'm just kind of curious about uh, chapter eleven. Now I'm in a business. My 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 regular. I haven't signed any personal notes, right? I haven't guaranteed anything personally. But my business has got problems, mm-hmm. uh, and I can't figure it out, and I can't make it work. Well, um. If you're doing a Chapter 11, if you have a business, it really matters if you want the business to keep running. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then you really don't have to worry about Mm -hmm. a Chapter 11. But a Chapter 11 will give you the opportunity to kind of reorganize the business Mm -hmm. and creditor working with the creditors, making agreements with the creditors through the bankruptcy to file Mm -hmm. uh, the Chapter 11. If you want to continue. If you want to continue running the business. Okay, now I just want to make sure I I got this. So if I'm uh, filing from a business point of view, right, um, I, I... but if I did guarantee anything personally, now I'm on the my personal assets, my home, everything else, that comes into play then. Right. Then you want to file an individual bankruptcy when you're back to looking at chapter mm-hmm. seven or thirteen bankruptcy. Now do you do do you do eleven for the business and seven and or thirteen for personal or no, it's all one big No, shot. you usually just do in, in those situations at least when I've mm-hmm. had it, um, they don't want to keep running the business. They just want to let it go. There's nothing there. It's in, in so much debt. And so they usually just shut down the business. And then you file the individual Chapter 13 or 7 and remove all your personal guarantees and just let the business fail. Because no, you a creditor can't go after a business that doesn't have anything. Mm-hmm. So if you just let it fall to the wayside, then mm-hmm. you're getting out of your personal debt individually and maybe you start another business. Mm-hmm. When I'm thinking about People freeze in situations like this, become paralyzed, and they just stop paying everything, period. Mm-hmm. Talk about this, because this is a major consumer issue. When I saw you file this, I went out on the Google, and it was just on, everywhere. Yeah, I've seen that a lot, and it, people just get scared. They don't right. know what to do. They, they stop opening any mail, mm-hmm. so they don't even know what they owe. They can't even come up with a list of their creditors, because they truly just don't know anymore. And that's one of the worst things that you can do. It's always better to, you know, you see the writing on the wall and you learn all your options and figure out what the best scenario is. Because sometimes people have had lawsuits filed against them. They have judgments against them. And then once you have a judgment, you can't do anything. You file mm-hmm. bankruptcy and you get rid of it. So people are, mm-hmm. are looking for some other option besides bankruptcy. But you can't do that when you, you don't know what's truly going on. When I was on the Internet... There seemed like a lot of people were in trouble because they got paralyzed, afraid. There was a bit of phobia involved in getting this going to a bankruptcy attorney. Right. Uh, you know, and one of the things about it is, is that there's, and maybe you could help us with the last couple of minutes we have left in the show and this last segment, to demystify the fear of going to a bankruptcy attorney. You know, because people are afraid to go to you guys. I mean, you don't sound, you don't look mean to me now. Right? <laughs> we're not mean. We're just trying to figure out the best mm-hmm. option for for people who are in bad financial situations. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's always better to know the information. Knowledge is power. Um, So you want to find out how you can solve the problem. And there's nothing nothing bad that we can tell you that you probably don't already know, honestly. Mm -hmm. So everybody's pretty up to speed on what the ramifications are anyways. I think most of the time. When I tell people, you know, these are your options, this is best Mm -hmm. case, this is worst case, People usually say, yeah, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. But they need to hear it from someone else. And once you, mm-hmm. once they have heard it from me, they usually say they feel better because they know their options and there's not even a worse case mm-hmm. scenario than they thought. Do you think they come to the table most of the time with the worst scenario and you have ways to make it a lot more manageable and mitigate it? Yeah, there are a lot of times that's the case. And I feel good about doing mm-hmm. that. <laughs> well, so, so your practice could be a little bit pastoral, really, when you think about it, right? A little <laughs> yeah. bit uh, the, the shrink on the couch, right? Sure. Well, I, am, to, before we leave, I want to say, you know, when you're looking at it, do most attorneys charge a flat rate retainer or do they take monthly payment? What's what's the game in town on for, as far as paying an attorney? Most of the time, a bankruptcy attorneys will get free consultations. So there's no harm in going to figure out what your options are. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then when you retain them, it usually is a flat fee um, because attorneys can't become creditors of their own bankruptcy clients through the bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. But there are instances where you know that there's going to be additional work after you file the bankruptcy petition in the case of maybe student loans mm -hmm. or um, negotiations with creditors. And that in that case, they might be an hourly fee. Mm -hmm. But those are the basics and so forth. And the flat fee for the non-asset sounds pretty straightforward, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, thank you so much for being around. Listen, I want to thank Mallory for being my special guest expert on this series on the myths and the material facts of bankruptcy. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, and financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game.